Welcome back to Swamp Shangri-La Rural Living here in the heart of the South Carolina Low Country. We're back. Had to take a little hiatus because of work schedule and everything from filming, but we are back. As you can see, it is at the heart of summer here in South Carolina. It's around 95 degrees right now, I would say, folks. If, uh, the high call for going well over 100 in the heat of the day. And that's just the... Uh, realistic thing about living down south you're going to have to deal with some heat and if you want to get stuff done you're going to deal with it you can see we are sitting on the old oak we did our commissioning cut with our 661 steel and we're going to cut us a healthy section of log out of this bad boy and we're going to take it on up to the mill however before we do this we got to reestablish our trailhead if the lovely director will pan the camera around and just look at everything going around to that trailhead over there further to the right and show the wonderful audience what we got going on just in general you will see that this area in the course of a month has more or less turned into jurassic park we got more wasps flying around horns flying around things are gonna sting you and laugh when they do it you can shake a stick at it. I got a few snakes out here too, but I'm more concerned about the flying stinging variety. So we're going to do some bush hogging here to reestablish the trailhead. We're going to watch out for uh, stumps and the like from when me and my brother did some logging about three years ago. But we're going to reestablish this trailhead, get a section of log up there and see about getting some good renderable material. So thank you for watching. Stick around, folks. set up to do some cleanup around this tree here the lovely director pans around you'll see where well, we bush hogged around re-established probably better clear area than we originally had so what we're going to do is we're going to get a nice section of this log but first I'm going to trim some of this uh, maple trees, thin maple saplings out of the way. And that way I can get a decent section of log out. Now we're probably about a good 98 degrees out here right now, folks. And the first thing you notice, I put on a set of chainsaw chaps. Yeah, they're hot. I feel like the temperature has gone up 15 degrees around my nether regions. But, going back on a rehash, you have a lot of arteries on the inside of your legs because that is how your legs are designed. You have heavy meat and bone on the outside to protect the arteries on the inside. 
being hot, being fatigued, not sufficiently hydrated will get you hurt, will get you killed. Now, our objective here at Swamp Shangri-La Rule of Living is to help you, the viewer, negotiate your task, try to implement some knowledge to you. If you have to take 10 breaks to do something, do it. If you think you can get it done, oh, I can get that done. I can just see it through. No, you can't. No, you can't. I've known guys that worked their entire life in 110 degree heat and everything else. We got a saying. A lot of you veterans already know the saying. Once that monkey gets on your back, it don't get off. And that's the brutal reality. So when it comes to working in hot weather, what I want to impart on you, the viewer, is to be vigilant, be cautious, use, we always say use common sense, use your head, engineer the hazard away from the problem. If you feel hot, you are hot. You can take one look at me, and tell I'm hot. I am. But we're going to see this done. And then I'm going to take me a nice water break. And we're going to get on with it. Stick around. Something I got a while back, folks. Logger's tape. It's about a 75 foot one, I believe. But it does wonders. So. Right here, it's just over 12 feet. Right at the base of this, right here. Pushing 13 feet. So that's where we're going to make our cut to take it up to our mill. Logger tape is so nice because they have a little stick pin. They're on a nice retracting reel. Steel casing. You really can't go wrong with them. They'll set you back a little bit. But you can put new parts on them. It isn't like the average one you buy at a box store and if something happens, you throw it away. You can actually rebuild these things. So really, that makes it worth the money. Stick around, we're about to cut this thing.
gonna get these hot old chaps off. I'm gonna roll this thing. Give you a good shot. Core wood.
Okay, we got the log as you can see positioned on the bunk here. And there she is. Nice healthy chunk of red oak. And as you guys saw in that footage, I think it's safe to say that I taxed the limits of Little Red. Well, Little Red's my affectionate nickname for our little 2605 Massey Ferguson right there. I think it's safe to say, guys, that, well, I think I taxed the limits of the old gal. Front tire's going flat, rear end was coming up, everything else. I would say it was, uh, this is the heaviest log to date. I can safely say that I moved. That big uh, pine that I moved in one of our earlier videos that you guys saw me rolling and everything. You know, it was a good sized log, but I must say, oak is notorious for having extreme density. Matter of fact, you know, a little piece of trivia for you. If you go and get yourself a sawmill and get blades and things of that nature, uh, one of the things the sawyer there, the blade man's going to ask you is, what are you going to be cutting? And he's going to be asking you if you're going to be cutting dry oak. Well, because that's sort of like the wood equivalent of steel, as far as if you want to talk about American grade hardwoods. We don't have teak or shishin or some of these notorious hardwoods you'll have around the world. But oak, on a whole, is known for being extremely strong. Matter of fact, it was the preferred building medium of the old shipwrights back during the days when people would sail the seven seas and be out at sea for years at a time. They'd have planks made of oak and the ships would have at least a 50 year life depending on care maybe longer i think the constitution is still floating that hail is clear back from the revolutionary war so we taxed a uh, little red right there another piece of trivia for you if you guys ever get a tractor for your homestead your backyard Whatever you feel you need a tractor for. Often, if you have a loader, and sometimes even without a loader, the rear tires of the tractor, they will fill with water and eco-friendly glycol. Antifreeze. As long as water has some kind of antifreeze in it, and it doesn't take a lot, that way the water won't freeze. But you have positive weight with the water. That will be your counterweight for your front end loader. Well, I think the rear end came up on me a couple times there when I was coming around. I know the front tires are going flat. I know that. And I know whenever I hit a stick or hit a stump or anything like that, I know uh, that kind of bogged that thing down. But I think this is the heaviest log we have done to date, folks. And right now, as it stands, it's a little bit wider than our bandsaw. I'm either going to have to rotate the log to where the profile is more of the narrow profile going towards the top, or I'm going to do some trimming of a chainsaw. So appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you on the next one.